All right, we're going to get started on a nice Friday night MacBook board repair here. We've got an 8200164 board. That appears to have the problem of no power. Let's first confirm the issue that they claim, which is that it doesn't power on. Looks like on this MacBook, the battery has been lifted a little bit. The DC inboard is unplugged. All things that I'm not exactly happy and excited to see on a MacBook before it comes here. What did they do to you, little MacBook? Who hurt you? All right, so it doesn't turn on, and it takes 16 milliamps on my power supply. Reflow SMC, then give it to Paul, right? That's not what we're doing here. That sounds like a terrible idea. We don't do that on this channel. I don't know what you're talking about. That must be something new, because that just happened yesterday. That, that doesn't happen here. You must be watching a different channel. All right. Let's see what we have on this MacBook. No way. There's no way I got this on the board that's... No way. Steve put this in my status. I had one too, earlier. No way. What are the issues that you have with how Steve sets the queue? Uh, well, I got like six dead SMC so far in the last four days. Uh. <laughs> and I got this capacitor. Paul, what has Steve been putting in your queue recently? I had the same capacitor on a on the same uh, uh, eleven inch air earlier today. So the queue appears to be working as intended. <laughs> New guy gets dead SMC. Back to this air board. So let's see what this capacitor is for. You'll see that this is C seventy four thirty. This is a cap that sits between. PP bus S5 HS computing iSense and ground. This is used to smooth out the that 8.5 volt rail before this transistor in this buck converter circuit here to makes PP1V2S3. PP1V2S3 is going to be a 1.2 volt power line, and that's going to be created by this transistor and this chip switching. So here we have 8 volts, right? This is 8 volts. Now a transistor can turn on off, on off, on off. This chip over here is going to control this transistor. So you're going to get some 8, some 0. Some of the 8 from up here, and then it's going to close, and you're going to get 0. Some 8, 0, 8, 0, 8, 0. And th through this coil, it's going to get averaged out. So instead of having a bunch of 8, and a, bunch of, a little bit of 8, a bunch of 0, a little bit of 8, a bunch of 0, a little bit of 8, a bunch of 0, instead of having this waveform, you're just going to have it averaged out to 1.3 volts. And these capacitors are going to provide the smoothing down here. Now, PPBus S5 HS Computing iSense is actually PPBus G3 Hot. Now, you may wonder, why are there two different names for this rail if it's the same rail? And that is a great question. That is going to confuse a lot of people. So let's take a look over at R5450. So what I just talked about requires that you kind of understand how a buck converter works. I would take a look at my basic electronics video series and how a buck converter works if you don't understand that. To understand why there's a different name for PPBush D3Hot when it's on that side of the board, you should check out my current sensing video from about three or four years ago where I talk about how a current sensing circuit works. So PPBush D3Hot over is over here, and it's going to go through R5450 before it becomes PPBus S5 high side, I, I'm guessing high side, computing iSense before it becomes this. Now, th on each side of this resistor, which is 0 0.002 ohms, it's virtually no resistance at all, on each side of the resistor, you have this chip to its right, U5450, measuring the amount of current, I mean, measuring the voltage at each side of the resistor. So it's going to see how much, how much volts are here, how many volts are here, how many volts, not how much volts, that's, that's dumb. Yeah, so you're going to see much how voltage. many volts are on this side and how many volts are on this side. The greater the voltage difference between these two sides, the more current is being used. So that is a way for the system to tell how much current a specific part of the system is using. So for all intents and purposes, I like to consider that this capacitor that we're looking at over here is on PPBus G3 hot, just to keep things simple for me. And that's, that's just the way I, I, I look at it in my head. So all these things that say PPBus underscore something are typically on PPBus G3 hot. 
So that cap is shorted to ground. Now, if we were to plug in my multimeter, and let's just pray that the Paul Daniel software works today, and see if I can get that on the screen. Let's see what voltage PP bus G3 hot winds up being. We get nothing. Now I'm also going to check at the PP bus G3 hot fuse where that rail is directly created. You get zero volts on one side and 8.6 on the other. So check that out. See, zero volts on this side, 8.6 on the other. So if we look at the area where PP bus G3 hot is actually created at F7140, which is not far away, this is a fuse, and this fuse is going to sit between the circuit that creates PP bus G3 hot. This is yet another buck converter. This is taking the 18 volts from the charger and turning it into 8.6 volts for the system. This is the fuse at the end. We get 8 volts on the left side before the system and 0 on the right side. Now, if I were to check for a short circuit to ground, I bet we'd see one. Time Warner is making your stream buffer. Sure. Let me just call up Time Warner Tech Support and have them fix that for me while I'm doing the stream. Because I'm, I'm confident that they're just going to fix my latency and make everything all better again. So we're going to remove that capacitor. All right, that capacitor is off. Now we're ready to wick the pads and install a better one. load a new capacitor on there. In all its glory. <laughs> I'm already when working on a touch when, bar. When <laughs> I forgot which of the fuses on the desk is the good one. Uh-oh, my fuse fell on the fan. Yeah, good luck. That's what I get for giving them a fuse. <laughs> fuse! You're not getting that out of there. Maybe if you shake it. Now, let's put that fuse on there. What well, MacBook generation can I recommend to my friends who refuses to get anything else as their Facebook machine? Does your friend really need to spend $1,200 to use Facebook? I have nothing to say to that. If you use a Mac because there are specific audio software, if you like Logic, if there are certain plugins that only work on Apple, I can respect that. If you're saying, I need to buy a MacBook for my professional Facebooking, just, I have nothing to say to that. I bet we get fan spin. Fan spin!